It seems like this year, more than any other, we've seen the victims of crime get younger. The victims aren't only those who die, they're those who are wounded and those left behind. Kids have to find a way to cope with all this. And tonight, Sally Ann Roberts talks to some kids who hope their music will carry a message as we continue our series, Kids at Close Range. This is a rap that everybody knows what's going on in our generation. Today's young musicians are rapping about the world around them, a world that has become increasingly violent. Thinking with a madman's mind as I start to rhyme. I'm sitting back grieving over the crimes that happen every second minute out of the day. Every time I turn around, another brother is slayed. On the front of every paper, a black person's dead. What can I do besides shake my head? It really upsets me when I witness and see. Teachers, doctors, and lawyers, very six feet deep. I really want For many know. children, this is not someone else's nightmare, but their own. They have seen the bloodshed. How could this be? How could this be? How could this be? How could this happen to me? It was August 6th, a day that sticks in my mind until about 6 o'clock. I was doing real fine. It was a friend, a cousin, my brother, and me. I just don't understand how this happened so quickly. I heard gunshots. They went pop, pop, pop. They were so dog on close to me. I thought I was shot. As we were running, 16-year-old Erica Weber is talking about the day she was almost shot, and her brother, then only four years old, was shot. It happened in 1991 in the Weber family's old neighborhood, the Gust Homes. A whole group of us was outside together, and um, and somebody was arguing or something, and then they pulled out a gun and was shooting, and my brother ran. I don't know where he was, but he was lost for a couple of minutes, and then when we found him, he was shot four times. Vernon, where were you shot? On oh, my hand, my back. Vernon, now seven, can point out the places he was shot, but what he can't show you are the emotional scars left by the 9 millimeter semi-automatic. He has his own bedroom. It's, you know, it's full of like children and things, but he won't sleep in it at all. He'd sleep with Erica. If she only not sleep in the bed, he'll sleep on the side of the bed, make a little pad in the room, and sleep on the floor in that room bottom. And all of this happened after, after the shooting? Yeah, after he got shooting. And he liked to stay closer to me. Before he used to go everywhere, everybody used to always take him all over. He was always gone. But now he's home most of the time because he don't want to go to any places. And Erica, too, has had emotional wounds. For a while, I felt it was my fault. I thought that maybe if I would have watched him or was more responsible, then I could have prevented it. But I realized a lot of people have been telling me that it wasn't really my fault, you know, but I thought all the guilt fell on me, so that's why I was guilty. What do you think about all the violence that these children are growing up in? I think it's terrible. They really can't live a child life now. And it's hard on them. And they see so much that, you know, just take their little mind away from them. They won't stay inside. They, they can't really do things children normally do. Scared to go to the stores. It's just a shame. The question in my head was why God, why? My brother lived and I was happy, you see. But this could have been a case of someone six feet deep, and that's deep. How could this be? And that's deep. How could this be? Sally Ann Roberts, Channel 4, Eyewitness News. The Children's Bureau of New Orleans helped the Webbers deal with the violence that invaded their lives. If you know of a family that's suffering grief or despair because of violence, you can call the Bureau at 525-2366. We'll be back.